Hi, it's October 23rd, 2020, and I'm going to tell my third story today in my story time saga of my life, and I'm calling this one Fred, or as I like to call him, Uncle Remus, and you know, I have my own reason. Uh, I briefly mentioned Fred yesterday in my previous YouTube video, and uh, I realized that today I need to really talk about him in depth and my alleged adoptive mother, which, well, has become possible, at the very least, in the last less than 24 hours, that she may not have even been my adoptive mother. <laughs> uh, that's a whole other story. But she was, I guess, <laughs> his sister. And from what I've learned, they were two peas in a pod. He was just as evil as her. And... Uh, I don't know exactly what was going on when I was little, but um, I do know that after I went to live with the people who raised me, um, whenever Fred would come over to visit, now I'm two years old, right? Two, three, four, five. He absolutely terrified me. From the moment he stepped foot in the house, I ran screaming from my parents' bedroom, crawled under their bed, and refused to come out until he was gone. Well, I personally believe it's because he did something to me. Probably before I went to live with them, maybe during, but oh yeah, he did something. And I believe it was MK Ultra. I believe he may be the one who stole me from my mother uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, kidnapped me, uh, spirited me away, clear across the state, Kansas City, put me in a particular Kansas City University <coughs> medical center, and did his thing because I know there is one. And the reason I know there is one is because I listened to a woman named Christine De Nicola talk about it. And the light went on when I heard it. It's like, oh my gosh. I was in Kansas City. She was taken by Dr. Green, quote unquote, who happened to be Joseph Mengele in Arizona and taken to said Kansas City University where they drugged and tortured and programmed her. I may have been there at the same time. I don't know. I'm a little older than her, but that doesn't mean we didn't cross paths. Anyway, I'm thinking that that's a very likely possibility. Um, however, to go back in time, um, in 2013, my uncle Eddie, my pseudo-adopted or adopted mother's youngest brother, who I called Uncle Eddie because he was pretty good to me, uh, unlike Fred. And um, we had some talks, uh, three to be precise, and some pretty long ones. He told me some interesting information, revelations about Fred and my so-called mother. One of them was that Fred disappeared when he was 12 years old. He um, just, yeah, vanished. Actually, he told me that he ran away. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, did he leave a note? I don't know. Um, why did they think he ran away? I don't know that. 
Maybe he was abducted. But he disappeared, not to be seen or heard from again for 10 years. Whereupon he simply reappeared and never breathed a word to any about, about his whereabouts or what he'd been doing. Okay, hmm. Well, I knew a woman on Facebook who was connected to Ancestry.com at that time. I am now, but I wasn't then. She gave me her phone number. I called her up, and for like two, three hours, uh, she searched Ancestry.com for various members of the family on both my biological and my adoptive side. And the only thing she found out about Fred was that one place he was at was Georgia, state of Georgia, where he was an actor in a theater, vaudeville, who knows, an actor. And what I found interesting about that is that's what a lot of spooks do as a um, second profession when they're not spooking. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember The Gong Show with Chuck Barris, I think was his name. Well, he was a spook. In real life, he was a CIA agent. And a lot of actors are. I've learned about quite a few of them. I've seen movies, like Sherlock Holmes movies, where actors are doubling, you know, the, 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 the spies are doubling as actors. So... I don't think it's at all impossible to Charles Frederick, Fred, uh, Uncle Remus, as I like to call him, went on to be a spook because he was in World War II and Korea and the family was German and English. So what's the likelihood that he may very well have been a Nazi sympathizer, you know, and worked for Himmler? Or Hitler, or and maybe do, Joseph Mengele. Uh, he had the bloodthirsty personality. He supposedly, this is what I was told when I was a child, was a traveling salesman. Hmm. Yeah, well, that would be a good cover, wouldn't it? Cover up for all the missing time, all the time that you know he was gone from home, who knows where, do, doing who knows what. I know he's got at least one illegitimate daughter, uh, and she was born in Texas. I've been able to find that out. So if he could have done anything, been anywhere. <sighs> so that goes along perfectly well with my adoptive mother's personality, who, well, she was, among other things, a pathological liar. And I learned last night with the help of a very dear friend, that she was into satanic worship. Now, I realize there are probably people watching this going, well, you really shouldn't be speaking ill of the dead. Well, I don't think of it as that. I think of it as truth, first of all. Second of all, I'm not superstitious. They're not going to come back from the grave and haunt me because they're not in the grave anymore. I know where they're at. And it's not heaven. Uh, no, not, no, uh, no, I'm too well protected. Okay. I've got Jesus anointing in my blood. And they can't touch that. So I'm not worried about it, nor do I fear him. Anyway, um, yeah. And um, so he, you know, he was one of the beautiful people, like I said in my previous video yesterday. Oh, yeah. And yet, no, uh-uh, no, he wasn't. I mean, because tell me something. Does a truly beautiful person on the inside, as well as the out, try to talk you into giving away your firstborn child 
to a psychotic individual, uh, your ex-husband and his evil mother? No, only if they're evil. Does a truly beautiful inside and out person who loves you then go on at another point in time and deliberately set you up to be abandoned 850 miles from home without two pennies to rub together? No, they do not. Well, he did both. So that was, yes. Uh huh. Charles Frederick Thomas, also known as Fred, also known as Uncle Remus. And uh, if I'm whistleblowing, I don't care. If anybody knows who I'm talking about, that's all right. I hope I'm helping you. I'm not doing this to hurt anyone. The people I'm speaking of are dead, have been for many years. Um, the mother, and I use that term loosely, really, because I found out that she was even worse than I thought she was. Um, she's been dead since 2008. Fred's been dead since 2011. So they're gone, and I don't hate them, but I wish they wouldn't have been in my life because, oh my gosh, the problems they caused me. But uh, yeah, there was MK Ultra Bar going. There was also satanic worship in the house that um, my adoptive parents were living in when they adopted me. Um, crazy, unbelievable. Alien. Okay. Alien. Yes. Apparently, my dad knew about the aliens because they abducted him. <laughs> and then he made a deal with them to leave me alone after they adopted me. So anyway, that's just a preview of a future episode. 